Hey, what's up everyone? Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cool real-time 3D spaceship with Spline Tool. And we're going to cover a lot of interesting techniques to achieve this look and feel, so let's get into it. Alright, so here we are in the Spline Tool. So by default we have this rectangle here, so let's just remove it. And now let's click on this plus button and create a lathe. So it will give you an X shape object like this uh, so I'm going to uh, scale it up a little bit so the very cool thing about this lay object is that you can uh, adjust the shape of the object by controlling this uh, vector curve here and you can control the upper point or the lower point to uh, create the shape that you want it uh, so I'm going to go with something like this so next, I'm going to create a, a bottom of the rocket. So let's create a cylinder. So let's make it a little bit bigger and we can rotate it uh, by adjusting this angle here. All right, so let's just make it a little bit uh, thinner uh, like this. All right, then so move it up to uh, uh, hit the bottom of the, the, the lay shape. And then let's uh, duplicate it into the second uh, cylinders and move it down here and scale it down a little bit so it's gonna look like this. And you can also uh, create a hole in the middle of this by just um, adjusting these hollow properties. Uh, so something like this will be cool. All right, so now we're going to make the wings or the fins of the rockets. So let's click on this pen tool. So with this tool, you can draw any kind of vector shape uh, that you want. Uh, so I'm going to draw this uh, fin shape like this. So as you finish drawing, you can click on this close button to uh, finish the drawing. Now you can see that we have a uh, 3D shape here. So if you select the shape, you can see that there's a bunch of different properties here. So you can play around with. So let's increase the extrusion to make it a little bit thicker like this and we can also give it a very slight uh, bevel like this to make it uh, feel a little bit smoother alright so it's looking good uh, so now we have one fins here so we need the other three fins to finish the rockets uh, but instead of just uh, manually duplicate the fins uh, I will show you a, another cool way to do it so down here we have this cloner so let's just click on this so you can see that it's duplicated into uh, multiple uh, objects like this and you can use all of the properties here to uh, manipulate the cloner uh, so let's uh, adjust the count to 4 and switch the axis to uh, X and now we have something like this and then on this alignment properties let's click on yes and now we see that all of the fins uh, being aligned to a circular direction like this uh, so you can adjust the radius to make it a little bit closer to the body of the rocket like this so you can see that the original shape is still uh, showing up here so you can click on this uh, high button to uh, make it disappear Alright, so this is looking good. So next step, let's create the uh, pilot rooms. So let's just uh, create a simple sphere like this and move it closer to the body of the spaceship. So we can uh, adjust the overall shape of the sphere to make it fit better. Uh, so something like this would be cool. Alright, so we have the basic model of the ship here. So now let's just play around with some material to make it look good. So now let's select the bodies and from this material panels, let's switch this color to gradient. So we have this gradient here, so click on this thumbnails to uh, adjust the gradient properties. So I'm going to give this angles, uh, 90 degree angles, and I'm going to move this point more toward to this position. All right, so let's adjust this black uh, to something maybe purple uh, like this. So now let's uh, create another layer. So with this layer, I'm going to select uh, Fresnel. And let's reduce the intensity by maybe 60. All right, and then let's create another layer. And with this one, let's select Radiance. And let's just adjust it to 90 degree angles. And then let's adjust this point uh, closer to each other like this. And with this white color, I'm going to give it a 
a little bit like red color like this so we're going to give this layer a blending mode so let's select screen uh, so we have something like this so let's go back here and adjust this a little bit uh, so let's move it up a little bit like this so you can see that there's a, a very cool color blending going on here so uh, I think it's looking pretty good Alright, so now I'm going to make a final touch to this material by adding a image layer. So with this image layer, I'm going to load a uh, JPEG that I uh, created before. Uh, so something simple like this with black and white, so you can create this uh, with any kind of tool like Figma or Sketch and export it to uh, JPEG or PNG. So let's select it and load it to the 3D so you can see that it's being mapped to the bodies of the spaceship. Uh, so from here you can uh, select this blending mode and let's select multiply and then you can see that it's being blended to the rest of the, the other layers. We can have this cool um, overlay going on here. Uh, you can see that the map is kind of uh, being applied backwards. So let's just rotate the whole shape so it could match up to the uh, pilot's room like this. And then let's uh, just rotate the fins a little bit so they don't cut up the text. So this is looking pretty good. Uh, so now let's uh, apply some material to the fins. And so let's select this cloners. And uh, in order to adjust the material, you need to turn on the base shape. So let's click show. And from the color layers, let's switch it to uh, depth. And it will give you a very cool 3D gradient here. So let's adjust the colors. So for the bottom of the ship, I'm going to give it very simple materials with some um, dark purple like this. And now finally the pilot window. So let's give it a uh, black color like this. And for the lighting, let's click here to switch it to physical. And let's add another layer. So with this layer, let's select um, Fresno. And let's click here to adjust the properties. So uh, for the scales, give us 3, 4, for intensity. And we have something like this. Alright, so now we're going to uh, make the uh, chat engine fire trail. So let's click here to create another lathe uh, object. And let's move it down here. And make it a little bit bigger. So now we can adjust the curve here to make it look like a uh, jet engine trail. So next, let's uh, give it some color. So let's go to the color channels and switch it to uh, gradients. And let's adjust the gradient into uh, uh, something like this. So let's select another node at the end of the trail and give it whatever colors the background is to make it blend into the background. But before that, uh, I wanted to uh, switch the color of the background to something uh, different. So let's click on uh, the background and then just adjust the color here. So let's give it a uh, little bit purple color like this. And with this background color, let's uh, copy the color code here and just paste it to uh, this uh, material. And then let's uh, reduce the intensity of the lighting layer to 20. So we have something like this. And now I'm going to uh, show you some trick to make the uh, blurry effects to make it look more realistic. So let's duplicate this uh, fire trail here and rename it to uh, blurry effect. And then let's uh, scale it bigger like this. And then let's go to the material panels and then turn off the lighting. And then for the gradients, just switch it to glass. And now you can see that it's um, creating a blurry effect with these glass layers. And then all we need to do is to adjust the overall shape to make it fit better. Alright, so this is looking good. So we can also uh, add some uh, point light here to um, create some lighting effect to make it feel more 
like in some kind of energies going on at the bottom of the ship. So let's adjust the color to uh, something a little bit yellow like this. And we can also uh, increase the distance. And we don't need the shadow for this, so let's turn off the shadows. Uh, so we have something like this. Alright, so we have this really cool looking uh, spaceship here. So now let's just make it more interesting by adding some interaction to it. So first thing I wanted to do is to uh, kind of make some animation for this trail. Uh, so let's select the uh, trail layers. And from the right panels uh, on the stage section, let's create a stage. So it's going to give you a base state, which is the original state and the second state here. So so we can apply different properties like position, scale, rotation to each of the states. So I'm going to give the second state something like this. And you can toggle between these two states to see how different it looks like. Okay, so uh, after you're done with the two states, let's go to events and add another event here. So with this one, I'm going to go with start. So the animation will start as you open this uh, 3D experience. And so we have the fire object and let's select the state. Uh, and you can click on this play button to preview it. So you can see that the animation is just playing once. So uh, let's just uh, go back to the properties and make some adjustments. So all you have to do is to turn on the cycle and the repeat toggle. Let's uh, give it a try. So now you can see that the animation is being uh, repeated. So we can have this kind of very cool uh, looping animation of the trail. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do is to make the uh, animation of a ship uh, spinning uh, indefinitely. So let's just select everything and group it into one single group. And this with whole group selected, let's give it this two state. So for the base state, let's give it this way. And for the second state, I'm going to adjust the rotation to uh, 360. So it will be a perfect um, turnover. And then let's add an event. So we're going to go with start event and uh, it's going to go to second state. And let's turn on the repeat. And now let's just review it. So it's moving pretty fast and there's some kind of an ease in and ease out of the animation. So it's looking weird. So let's go back and just simply um, switch it to light near and adjust the duration to 10 seconds. So it's moving much slower now. So actually it's a little bit too slow. So I'm going to give it maybe six. Alright, so this is more like it, so really cool looking. So the last thing I wanted to do is when I click on the ship, the wings or the fins will expand into a bigger wings. And as I release, it will go back to the original state. So in order to do that, let's select the fins cloners and make sure to uh, turn on the base shape so that we can adjust um, all of the properties here. So uh, let's add another state. So for this state, I'm going to adjust the position and move it up a little bit like this. And let's change the scale values of the X and the Z to two. So it's become bigger like this. And I also wanted to uh, make it shorter uh, like this and move it down uh, to this position. And then we can uh, reduce the radius of the cloner to uh, make it fit the body of the ship. Alright, so now we have two state, the base state and the second state. So now let's select the whole group. And then from the event panels, let's add another event. So with this event, I'm going to select uh, mouse down. So this will happen when you click the mouse. So for the object, instead of brackets, let's select the fins objects and select the state. And for the duration, let's reduce it to 0 
and then we need another event to uh, define what's gonna happen when you release the mouse so with this events I'm going to select mouse up and for the object let's select the fins and make sure to select the base state for this event all right so down here let's uh, adjust the duration to 0.5 as well so now let's just preview it so when you click and release all right so this is working pretty well so uh, let's go back here so the final thing i wanted to do is to uh using the same events at click and release but the body of the ship has to change the color as well so super simple all you have to do is to select the body layers and give it these two states like this and for the second state i'm going to adjust the colors of the materials a little bit so let's go to these layers and adjust this color to uh, uh, something like black like this and then move it position to uh, take over the more of the the body of the ship all right so now we have two state like this and now let's go back to the rocket roof and we already have a bunch of uh, events here so let's go to this mouse down event and down here you can see that there's a button here so let's click here to add another object to this event so with this object I'm going to select bodies and select the state and also reduce the duration to 0.5 and same here down here for the events uh, mouse up so let's add another object here so let's select uh, bodies and for this state let's keep it the base state and also adjust the uh, duration to 0.5 alright so now we have something like this so we click release the wing change the color change so really cool so as we're done with this, uh, we can go to export and there's a bunch of different export options here like public URL, web content, React component, image or videos, GLTF file or a local spline file. In this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly preview this 3D on your mobile phone. So let's click here to uh, edit the frame or canvas. So in here, you can see there's a bunch of different canvas size for you to choose so I'm going to go with this iPhone max uh, resolutions so you can see that the screen has been updated with this new canvas and then you can click here to assist and go back to the main view and let's create a new camera for this views so let's add a new camera here and then you can adjust the camera by just scrolling around to see what is the best view that you want and now let's click on export and let's go with public URL so from here if you scroll down you can see there's a bunch of different uh, options for mobile interactions so by default we have uh, two touches for orbit and three touches for panning so I'm gonna go with this and see how it's gonna look like so let's click here to uh, update the whole scene and then you scroll back to the top and copy this URL and then you can paste the URL to your mobile phone browser to uh, view the 3D experience. Alright, so that's it for today. So make sure to check out Spline.Design for this awesome 3D tool. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.